Hi, today, I'm going to explain a Japanese action thriller film called Yusuke. Watch out and take care. Baku Madarame is a prolific gambler who goes by the name of Yusuke. He is regarded as invincible by many, that is until he meets his match one day. The film begins on a skyscraper in Tokyo where Baku and the 21st generation royal leader of the Kakeru Club, Suichi Kirima, are gambling. The Kakeru Club is Japan's largest gambling organization which supervises many large stake games. The members for the club are picked from the country's highest political rankers, which means that these members have the power to pull the strings of the national government. The arrogant Baku challenges Suichi by betting his life on the line. If he wins, he wants Suichi's position as the leader of the Kakeru Club. Without speaking a word, the latter agrees. Meanwhile, the gambling is moderated by two club referees, including Hikoichi Yako. Rumor has it that they have never been impartial in their lifetimes. After consuming a biscuit, Baku bets that within an hour, at least one plane will fly by their location. Unfortunately for him, Suichi is so powerful that he secretly orders his henchmen to take control of all the flights in Japan and divert them away from their current location. It's also revealed that Baku had hired some pilots to fly by their location before the game, but they are immediately assassinated by Suichi's people. As a result, no planes are seen by the predicted time limit and Baku loses the game. However, just when he is about to be finished off, the club referee Haikoki informs Baku that his execution is revoked. Instead, he will be stripped of his club membership and exiled to a remote location outside of Tokyo. The movie then fast-forwards by three years. Somewhere in a remote village, a bunch of men are seen gambling. Among them, an old man has been on a winning streak for two hours. The others are perplexed as to how he is winning every single game, despite the odds being equal for everyone. Shortly after, Baku shows up and confidently gambles 1 million yen, stating that he will eat the old man's lies. To everyone's surprise, he immediately wins the bet and exposes the old man's deception to the rest of the group. Baku breaks a dice and reveals a hidden magnet inside of it. He also shows the number of magnets that were hidden under the table. They were altering the dice's position, helping the old man win every single time. It's then revealed that Baku had also placed a magnet inside the 1 million yen he had bet. This eventually swung the tie in his favor, winning him all the money. Later during lunch, Baku meets one of his friends, who tells him that there is an uproar in Tokyo as one person wants to beat Suichi, the leader of the Kakeru Club. He informs Baku that the person is a scientist named Ikisada Kuni, who is widely popular in Tokyo. This is because of his latest breakthrough in discovering and mining a new element called, methane hydrate, an energy that can be used to replace oil. It turns out Iki had invested all his funds in his research, without the government's help. However, after one fatal explosion killed all the research members, he suddenly vanished from the public eye. But according to some sources, Iki is now targeting the Kakeru Club and mainly Suichi to become the next leader. This makes Baku yearn to return to the city so that he can settle his past. The scene then cuts to a gambling match between the finance minister, Masahiro Onodera and the scientist Iki, which is overseen by a club referee named Kiro Makama. It turns out that Masahiro was the one who challenged Iki so that he could hopefully control the next election by exploiting Iki's research findings. However, Iki manages to win all six betting rounds in a row, causing Masahiro a massive loss of 300 million yen. Humiliated, he orders the referee to restart the game, which is against the rules in the Kakeru club. When Kiro declines, Masahiro orders his men to kill him. Fortunately, the referee has exceptional combat skills and he easily kills the minister's men. After the massacre, Kiro approaches Iki and asks to be his personal referee. Meanwhile, Baku arrives in Tokyo where on the streets, he meets a young boy named Takami Kaji. Kaji is a kind-hearted boy but he has his problems too. He was cheated on by his friends, because of which he had to borrow money from dangerous loan sharks. As they talk on a bench, Kaji is suddenly confronted by the loan sharks, who threaten him for money. Fortunately, Baku scares them off by lying that he is a part of the Yakuza. He then asks Kaji how much debt he owes in total, and the latter replies 2.2 million yen. Feeling sorry for the boy, Baku offers to assist him. The same evening, the two enter an illegal casino owned by a woman named Ranko Kurama and gamble all the money they have on roulette. Baku purposely bets his coin chips on all the numbers except the ones chosen. 
Kaji calls the idea foolish, saying they will lose more coins this way. However, Baku increases his bet amount, confident that they will win everything. Unfortunately, Kaji is proven to be right. Baku loses the round, but he still doesn't look a bit worried. Instead, he decides to go all or nothing. For the final round, Baku increases his wager and bets on every number besides nine. He then eats a biscuit, and seeing this, Kaji immediately gambles all his money on the number nine. Turns out everything is a part of their plan. Before they started playing, Baku had told Kaji to bet all his money into the number that he hadn't chosen, once he ate the biscuits. The plan works and the duo wins the game and earns around 5 million yen. Baku gives the money to Kaji so that he can pay off his debts and continue his life. After the game, Kaji develops a liking towards Baku and asks to be his accomplice. However the prolific gambler doesn't want to endanger Kaji's life, so he declines. The same evening, Iki gambles inside Kurama's illegal casino and beats her in a game without much fuss. Baku is also among the crowd and he quickly challenges Iki to a game of their own. However, the latter declines the challenge as Baku is not a member of Kakeru Club. Desperate for a match, Baku approaches Kurama and pleads for her Kakeru membership, but as expected, she refuses. Instead, she directs him to a person that is willing to gamble their club membership. The person is an old man and a psychopath named Taro Kokone. In the next scene, Kaji approaches Baku and begs to be his sidekick. This time, the latter surprisingly agrees. So, the next day, the two meet Taro, who takes them to his house inside his own private forest. Taro explains that for their game, Baku and Kaji must obtain five keys from five of his pets within a certain amount of time. If they win, they will earn 10 million yen. The game will be supervised by none other than Hikoichi Yako, the famous referee from the Kakeru Club. However, before the game begins, Baku challenges Taro for his Kakeru membership. The old man thinks for a while and agrees out of pride. Filled with joy, Baku gifts Hikoichi a pen, but unbeknownst to them, it is a listening device. Shortly after, the game begins and the two boys find out that Taro's pets are actually mercenaries. They are even equipped with high-end weapons but despite this, Baku and Taro manage to defeat and capture them using the listening device. Annoyed, Taro unleashes his ultimate weapon, a muscular human named Rodem who turns out to be his biological son. It is revealed that Rodem has been subjected to a series of experiments, turning him into a powerful monster. However, he has one weakness, which is that Rodem falls asleep after every 15 minutes. Baku gets wind of this through the listening device, so he plans to stall Rodem long enough until he falls asleep. The two then enter a warehouse and find a bottle of methanol to use as a weapon. Shortly after, they use the bottle to blind and restrict Rodem's movements. He struggles for a while and eventually falls asleep, resulting in victory for the boys. They obtain Taro's membership and Hikoichi congratulates Kaji on becoming an official member of the Kataru Club. Here, it is finally revealed why Baku let Kaji join him as an accomplice. He wanted to gain the club membership via his accomplice, as his past with the club rendered him unable to do so. The next day, Baku returns to the forest and takes Rodem under his wing. Turns out the brute is actually a kind person, who just needs some love. Baku changes his name to Marco, promising to teach him some gambling tricks later. The scene then shows a flashback to Iki's past where he meets with the finance minister Masahiro on Adera and tells him that he wants to share his methane hydrate discovery with the rest of the world for free. However, Masahiro strictly refuses, claiming the product is dangerous for the general public to possess. To make himself clear, he installs explosives in Iki's lab, and destroys the entire place. The incident killed several scientists, and although Iki survived, he was rendered permanently blind. Now, his only mission in life is to take revenge against the government. Iki did some intensive research and came to the conclusion that becoming the leader of the Kakeru Club would be the easiest way to take down the corrupt government officials one by one. In the present, he finally accepts Baku's challenge to attract media attention. The movie then cuts to their match day which is broadcasted live and is witnessed directly by many state elites including Karama. As Baku and Kaji enter the gambling arena, the latter is spooked by Iki's new assistant Kiro. As a result, he accidentally fires his weapon, damaging one of the CCTV cameras inside. After a while, Hikoichi requests the audience watching the game live to participate by investing money as a bet for any player who wins. In addition, 
the investors also determine what sort of punishment the losing player will have to bear. Surprisingly, in a matter of minutes, the total sum of money betted amounts to 2 billion yen. Following this, the investors also decide that the resulting punishment will be hangman where the losing player and their partner will be hanged in front of the live audience inside the gambling arena. So, Baku and Iki play a gambling game called Hangman Old Maid in which two players take turns taking cards from the opponent's deck in order to look for the same matching card. As a result, any player who receives an Old Maid card at the end of the game is immediately declared a loser of that round. However in this particular game, the Old Maid cards have numbers ranging from 1 to 5, and the number chosen determines the number of parts to be assembled for the gallows. So, any player who receives old maid cards 11 times will also lose. Before the game starts, Hikoichi announces that any sort of cheating and underhanded techniques are allowed as long as the opposing player is unaware. So without any delay, the game begins and in the first round, Iki wins as Baku receives an old maid card worth 5. In the next round, he gets another old maid card worth 4, totaling his amount to 9 parts assembled for the gallo. Meanwhile, Kaji and Karama are anxious as they are sure that Baku will lose the game. To their horror, he pulls another old maid card. With this, Baku is only one card away from getting himself and Kaji hanged. However, Baku is determined to turn the tables around and in the final round, he eats his special biscuit. It is then revealed that despite being blind, Iki can see his opponent's cards through the CCTV cameras all around the gambling arena. When Baku comes to know of this, he uses the blind spot which was created when Kaji unintentionally damaged one of the cameras. As the game progresses on, he even peeks through Iki's cards, as everything is fair in this game. At last, he draws a made card with a pen, and shows it to a camera. Iki's brain perceives that his opponent has lost, and so he jumps in joy. Unfortunately, this only exposes his fraudulent plan in front of the referee and the entire audience. It turns out he had installed a device into his back with the help of which his brain could see everything happening via CCTV. Furious from defeat, the assistant, Kiro tries to attack Baku but Hikoichi effortlessly kills him. Witnessing this, Iki accepts his fate and officially grants Baku his Kakeru Club membership. He is then finished off as per the rules of the game in front of everyone. The movie then skips one year into the future where Baku, Karama, Marco and Kaji travel to a place for a gambling game. Shortly after arriving, they are greeted by Hikoichi who takes only Baku inside an arena. The movie ends as it is revealed that Baku will play against Suichi Kirima for the position of leader of the Kakeru club.